Hey, Brian from Garage Mahal. I am about to show you a video on how I finally brought our Maytag Skybox vending machine back to life. Um, watch until the end because this goes through the successes, the failures, the, the tries. Uh, I, I went through a lot with this thing, just trying to trying to bring it back to life and to actually have it like work the correct way. Um, the first was I took a compressor and I swapped it out, which I'll allude to in the video. Uh, if you've watched that already, I apologize. Uh, you know, we had a failed attempt at that. It did work for about a week, but that was it. Uh, the second phase is going to show you my thermoelectric uh, experiment attempt to see if this was actually going to like work and be, you know, a viable working project, uh, which we learned a lot from it. Um, but I don't want to give too much away in a video, but just watch until the end. We have a really good solution on how you can bring this back to life and get it working and operating and do what it was intended to do to, to bring uh, enjoyment instead of uh, stress to your family like it has ours. Um, we love this machine. We absolutely do. I think it's a great fit for the, the whole arcade. And if you've seen Garage Ball, you understand uh, it has been a mess, an absolute mess in here uh, because of this, because of this thing. So it has caused a little bit of stress in my life. And uh, I got it working again, ultimately. i uh, kind of given away the end, but you're probably going to watch the video and find that out anyway. But anyway, just watch the whole thing. See what I actually went through to get this thing back to life. And, uh, you know, we go from there. Hopefully, this is a project you can do yourself. But if you want to, you know, seek my contact information out and I do it for you by you know, shipping it to me, getting it to me. We meet halfway somewhere. I'm in Northeast Pennsylvania. Uh, we, we can figure it out. We can figure it out. But I just want you to get as much enjoyment out of this machine as I have. Anyway, uh, Brian from Graduate Hall, without further ado, let's, uh, let's get to the rest of the video. Okay, Brian from Garage Mahal. Uh, giving a quick update on my Maytag Skybox vending machine. Uh, these things were pretty popular, I don't know, probably about 10 years ago or more. And uh, the biggest problem was the compressor would go on these things. So after transplanting a compressor from this micro fridge, sorry about the mess, we got a lot of projects going on. Uh, it failed after a couple weeks. So back to the drawing board. However, I started looking at a solid state design of possibly cooling. And what it basically is, is it's two solid state um, cooling fans that basically on this side, it expels the hot air. And then on this side, it basically puts out cool air. So I have two units I plan on putting in the skybox. And this is the... Uh, makeshift one that I'm putting together now and it's blowing out at 59.4 degrees okay so give me an idea of what the ambient is on this side of the garage we are looking at uh, it's we got two temps here but basically 78 and 80 so if we want to round off 79 degrees on this side of the garage it's a shop side, so it runs a little bit warmer than the back. So, 59, 69, 79. So you're talking about a 20 degree difference in, in temperature that's coming out of that the little tube that I makeshiftedly put together. Um, and I've been having it run for about 10 minutes, and it continually keeps, the, keeps dropping a little bit. So if you can kind of watch on there. So we're making some progress on what I want to do. But anyway, that's kind of a quick update on what's going on in Garage Mahal as far as our vending machine is concerned. And like I said, it's, I've had a lot of stuff, been super busy lately. But anyway, hopefully we'll get that thing working. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be cutting the back out so I can put that solid state stuff in there and hopefully get that up and working. And with this side of the garage, I keep it cooler. I have that set at 76, but right now it actually is 76 degrees in here. And 
yeah that's about the update on that all right so i took some uh self-tapping screws and i'm screwing both cooling units down together so i'll make it sit nicer in the cabinet i just gotta put a little socket on it and get those tighter down in there that way i can hold these two pieces together and then next we will start working on making this makeshift experiment into a uh, permanent fix. All right, so I got the rack out. And this is what the back looks like. So now it's going to be a matter of figuring out where I can drill and cut a hole, a square hole, to fit that new uh, thermoelectric cooling unit. But anyway, make sure not to cut those wires. And I basically unscrewed this controller. I'm not going to use it. I'm going to use a new digital controller. And hopefully I should be able to piggyback off these wires to go to that. And I just drilled my first hole to kind of get some bearings of what's actually inside there. And then uh, before I can start making a cut. All right, so after drilling through, I figured out that it is about two inches is about how wide this whole thing is in the back. So if we measure this, so we're looking at, it's about an inch and a half. That's probably about your two inch mark. It's about where I want to, to mount it and those fans will kind of stick out in the back. So it's gonna be how far down it actually comes out. But this is your drip plate where the water Condensation drips down. So I'm gonna have to remeasure about how far that goes in to see how far I can actually mount that. But anyway. So I figured the easiest way to get kind of a perfect square to cut inside that was to make a template of this. So I think that's pretty pretty close. So I'm out the template in there, draw the marker lines around it, cut that out, and we should be good. All right, so I decided to come over seven inches. I get the tape measure out. Come out about seven inches from the side, just to give that little motor some more room. And on top of, obviously on the right side is where all the soda is gonna be sitting. So, I drew a quick and dirty template. I'm gonna draw, actually I'm gonna drill in the four corners and then redraw a template on the back and then I'll give me some guide points to the film from. And why is that so blurry? Okay, here we go, that's better. Anyway, so you should be able to see kind of like my magic marker lines in there based off that template, so. Let's get drilling. All right, so I don't know if you can see, I got a couple pilot holes drilled and I got a template out. So I'm gonna use my handy dandy Black & Decker Matrix jigsaw cut and we'll go. All right, so I cut out basically the metal and into, into the foam with the Matrix little jigsaw um, but I'm gonna have to use the bigger sawzall attachment to get all the way through the foam and the plastic on the other side so stay tuned all right so that is the back actually the front and the back of what I cut out and you can see it's some pretty thick foam that's in there and you are gonna cut through the coppers. So obviously make sure that your compressor is completely emptied out, vacuumed out of the refrigerant. And I believe there's heating coils in here as well, but uh, I don't see them. Only thing I see is the Freon, uh, Freon, the coolant lines. And uh, make sure you're wearing a mask because this thing gives off a ton of dust when you're cutting through. Um, all right, so that is your your foam, 
And I guess that's why it takes so long for it to actually cool because it's cooling the foam, which is gonna in turn heat up in here. But anyway, let me see how it, everything, oh, here's some more lines. I cut right through, but anyway, expect that. But again, make sure that you empty out your compressor. All right, let's see how the, the new thermoelectric unit fits in there. All right, so I have it basically cut just about how I wanted it cut in there. So we come through the front. This is the part I was a little worried about, but it looks good depth-wise. You know, these fans, it's kind of hard to tell from the camera angles, but the fans will not protrude past that two-inch foam mark, or basically the, the back of the plastic. So... I think we're going to be, uh, I think this is going to be pretty good. So anyway, not the, let me get my fingers out of the way there. Um, not the cleanest of cuts, but again, this is the back. You won't see it from the other side. Uh, when servicing the unit, you won't see it either. And like I said, I just did a quick and dirty cut job just to kind of see what's in. It's my first one. So obviously if I was doing someone else's or another one, it would be a lot neater. But again, this was the, the experimental guinea pig one. I don't know. Can you use guinea pig as a experimental sign anymore? Anyway, uh, political correctness. Today's a day and age. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to take that compressor out in the bottom. And then I'm going to run all the electrical wire down into there. And that's where I'm going to have the power control unit. But for now... At least that hole is cut, and I know that we got enough clearance in there. Okay, first part's done. Okay, so inside the unit, it's 68.3 degrees, and I have this haphazardly hooked together. That's the, uh, the power supply down there, and then this is the the unit running. Alligator clipped together before I make a permanent connection. And basically, I use duct tape to limit the airflow going into the cabinet. And uh, now we're at 67.8 and dropping. So, so far, so good. We're going to let this run for a little while. Uh, let me see, it's 70. The bottom number, it's 72 degrees in here. So I should at least drop it. Oh, it's dropping actually pretty quick. Now we're at 67.6. And uh, should drop it pretty quickly. And uh, 67.4. Anyway, that's kind of like the live feed. We'll check back here in about 10 minutes. And we'll see uh, how our project is doing. 67.3 and falling. Okay, stay tuned. I guess what I gotta do is actually show you the clock. So it's almost six o'clock and we are at 65.1 and falling. So it's actually dropping a lot faster than I thought it, it would. I mean, there's nothing in the cabinet right now. I mean, I have the, the rack outside, it's not loaded with soda, but you can definitely see how it is falling pretty quick. All right, stay tuned. All right, so we're almost at 10 minutes, and we have already dropped basically about 10 degrees. So I'm going to let this run for, I don't know, half hour to an hour. We'll see how low it actually gets. Um, I assume it's definitely going to drop into the 50s. I'd love to be able to see this thing drop into the 40s. Then you have really good chilled soda. And again, this uh, the cabinet's empty, so it is going to cool a lot faster. But there's another small degree it drops. Anyway, so it's 610 now. We'll let it run to about 7, and we'll see exactly where it sits at. Okay. All right, so we're at 60.6, roughly a little bit more than a half hour. So, um, it keeps going down. 
So we'll check back in in, I don't know, another 20 minutes, half hour. All right, so a little bit longer than an hour. And I achieved what I was looking for, at least, to get into the 59 or the 50 degree range. So we're there. And it's a matter of how much lower it's going to go. But I did open the cabinet and put the thermal gun on it. And it was showing me that it was spitting out about 54 degrees uh, on the inside. So as it gets cooler and cooler, those thermo electric cooling units will actually probably get it colder and colder. Um, in my research, I had read that sometimes they can actually go below freezing. So I'm actually going to hook up a, I guess, a electric digital um, temperature gauge that's in there and I can program it so it can shut the unit off and when it gets to you know a desired temperature uh, I think this original unit would actually only go down to about 45 degrees um, that's about the lowest I've ever recorded this unit going was about 45 degrees so for me to get there without a compressor would be pretty awesome and just to give you an idea is the the indoor temperature in here is still 72 degrees, 73 outdoors. So, but it's still doing its job. All right. All right, so while this keeps going down, I figured I'd show you how the back of the unit works. So, this is basically the heat exchanger on the back. So, you can see that that is actually, you know, 80. 93 some degrees so then it comes blowing out of the fan you got the temperature drops it mixes with the outside ambient temperature but that's what kind of causes the the, temp, the temperature change because it will actually pull the heat off this plate and then uh, I'm going to open the unit up but there's still 59.8 and slowly dropping as I drop the thermostat, but on the inside, so see these units are 54 degrees. It's coming out the middle of the of that, and then the back plate. You can see where there's some heat. So I'm actually thinking about possibly insulating that a little bit more. And you can actually you can see kind of the condensation build up on the back there. So. And then like on the back of that, so 55, middle of the unit, 54, <clears throat> 55. So I would imagine that and then here on the side, we're just getting a reading around 50 degrees, 51 degrees. So as the air continually circulates on the inside, I would imagine I'll probably get down somewhere into like the 35 to 40 range. Uh, more realistically, it's probably going to be in a 40 range at some point, somewhere. But uh, just to give you a general idea how it's working on the inside. And again, this cabin is completely empty. So it's going to be able to cool this a lot better and faster than if you load it up. So I'm not going to put bottles in there, but cans around here somewhere but if you load it up with cans obviously it'll take a lot longer to be able to cool them down i'd imagine probably i don't know with these readings it'll probably take uh four to six hours or maybe even longer it might even take overnight if you loaded this completely up with sodas but we'll do a test run on that but i think i have enough to go on from here to uh safely say that this is definitely definitely working so like i said looks like coming right out from any one of these units is going to be somewhere in the mid 50s and then as it just continually circulates through there it'll just get cooler and cooler and cooler 
because the inside cam air just gets strong through, cooled, and then spit out again. Anyway, that is the update. And once I neaten everything up and probably add a little more insulation and stuff in there um, and install a digital temperature gauge, I think probably there is where I'm going to mount it because that's where the old controller that I took out was from. So that's the old one that was in there. Just a little manual one and the digital one I have. I'll show you guys a little bit later after I hook that up. Anyhow, progress. Okay, so I removed the compressor for a second time. They're 10 millimeter bolts. You can get them with uh, two wrenches. It's not that difficult. These two bolts are actually going to remain in there. Um, otherwise, I got to take this off the base again. And I got to be honest with you, I really don't feel like doing that. But anyhow, that is the hole again from the back. And uh, cut the wires, cut one of the ground wires uh, that I didn't need. And this is going to be the, the main power cord coming in. And these are the two wire feeds that supply to the compressor as well as the ground that I cut and what I'm gonna do is one see if I can't salvage the, the wires that are up top I don't think I'm going to be able to when I mean wires at the top those for the, the thermostat that I took out which is this one and we are actually going to be replacing it with a nice fancy digital one just to keep more consistent temperature readings on a whole unit but i think these wires are going to actually be dead because they're they're tied into the rest of the electronics but i'm going to plug it in and see if i got a good voltage then uh we'll keep it if not then we'll uh we'll scrap them and then we'll probably run new wire up and over through here. And then I'll drill a little bit of a bigger hole and route the wires out that way. Um, I don't think I have enough room in here to run it, but we'll see. Okay. All right, so I mounted the controller bracket and I had to do two little cutouts with the Dremel to kind of make these uh, fit a little bit better. It's not 100%, but anyway, that's about how it's gonna be looking. I'll probably end up putting some sort of extra support here after I screw it in, but, um, and it's gonna be sideways, but you know what? I think we can all live with that. Oh, well, I'm at it. I got these uh, wire strippers. They look kind of kind of weird, but and just line a wire up in that little cavity right there. Try and do this one-handed. I don't know if it's gonna work one-handed or not, but oh here. I only need one wire lead anyway. Okay, so kind of lay the wire in there, and then you are basically just pulling down on the handle you get a perfectly stripped wire every time anyway from the other end just have it kind of hang over the edge there and boom perfectly stripped wire I love this thing this thing is absolutely fantastic um, I'll leave the link below but I do a lot of electronics work and that thing makes my life a heck of a lot easier and it works for the, uh, the other type of wire too, like, you know, 110, 220 wire, but anyhow. Okay, so when you're wiring up the controller, I'm basically setting it up on this diagram one. So we got the two leads, 12 volts going in, and then I'm gonna have a jumper that comes over between three and two, which is a single red wire. 
and then I'm got a single red wire which is going to be the, the main supply that's going to go out to the unit which is going to be behind there uh, basically this unit so if you're following along that is how we are going to wire that up all right so another the discovery the wires I'm running out of here I was actually able to uh, push them down through this hole uh, there was a little like service plug thing that goes in there for I guess you know insulation or whatever so you can pull it through there and I'm still gonna probably route the wires up come down around that drip and then uh, elevate it somehow so it doesn't interfere with the water dripping dripping down um, and going through that hole but I'll show you how that looks in a second all right so I got the wiring pretty well set and it kind of goes down and through and then I actually have it routed going through that little tunnel that the uh, disc goes through anyway going good all right so let's take a uh, quick peek inside but first I got the unit all wired up and it's 72.8 degrees in there because it's about 72 degrees in here well 74 but that's slowly dropping but on the inside so I got our thermostat switch set in here and you can see it's showing 77 that's showing 72.8 so eh, a little bit of a difference I don't know which one's gonna be more accurate I would assume probably that one because I had the cabinet that closed off so I got everything kind of wired up in here so it's at least kind of looks okay but again, this is going to be behind the soda unit, so you won't be seeing that. But I have it set for 70 degrees right now to shut off. Uh, eventually, I have a shut off at 35, but I just want to make sure that that actually works. So you can tell that kind of went up a click. We'll check back on that. And then around the back here, um, I soldered the connections. Just because uh, I love the solder. I mean, what can I tell you? And I used this liquid electrical tape to cover all the connections. So, yeah, it's not pretty, but that wasn't my goal. My goal is to make it functional first. And then on the next project, I can make it a lot prettier looking. So, here's the... The 12 volt output that controls everything and to simplify it I wired everything into one cord basically the cord that comes into the machine so what happens is I get everything wired together so your greens your whites your blacks it's pretty easy to follow now coming off the I guess the thermostat controller on the inside, I want to show in 77 degrees. So you're going to have your two leads that hook directly into the controller. And then that's going to power everything going to the controller. So that comes off your power pack. These two wire leads go to your thermostat on the inside. So basically it supplies power. And then you have a single lead that comes out. So that is going to go right up to your, your red side or your hot side. So the black, I have hardwired right into the power pack. So the black side is always going to have power to it. The red side or the hot side, that lead goes basically follow it into the cabinet and then hooks up to the thermostat. Hopefully I explained that correctly, but if you have a little bit of knowledge of uh, wiring, it's it's pretty easy to understand. And uh, let's go take a look at the front and see how we're doing here. So, temperature went up a little bit. So it's still trying to work on cooling the entire cabinet. And now that I have some little electronics in there and it, the whole inside was open, it's probably going to take a little bit longer but we'll check back in um, 
I don't know, about five minutes, and we'll see, see where we're going. Okay. All right, so we're about five minutes later, and the temperature is dropping pretty, pretty good. So I think the cabinet stabilized. However, that is going a little bit crazy. So we're just going to keep that cabinet cool. Oh, well, we got it open real quick. You can kind of see the the fans in action, and we'll put the thermal gun on it. So. They're shooting out about 50, 56, 55, 51. So as it circulates the air in there, that will drop lower. Um, I do have that thermostat way up on top. And if you remember from, uh, from school, hot air rises. So I think it's just kind of pushing the cold air is dropping. And it's pushing all the hot air to up, so that's why that thermostat's going a little bit crazy. But we'll just let that run and see how the cabinet works and cools down. But uh, so far, so good. All right. All right, so one major flaw that I found out is the temperature actually was dropping in the cabinet but that kept reading a high temperature and I couldn't figure out why until so that thing is actually kicking out it just said I mean it had a high 92 you can see where it clicked off so anyway we're gonna have to move that to outside the cabinet which means I got to reroute all the wiring and I'm probably going to mount it on the back here so it'll be a little bit of a pain I don't want to mount it on top because I think that will just really affect the look of the whole cabinet but anyway well, I guess we got to show our failures too that we we learn as we go. So, anyhow, over the next couple of days I'll remount it here on the side and uh, go from there. Okay. Okay. So I rerouted all the wiring. I'm not quite done in here yet, but I put both temperature sensors up there. So it's sixty nine point. Three. So we're going to shut this door and then I mounted this on the back so 69.6 if you look at it sideways so I think that's a lot closer in spec and then this is how the, the wiring kind of looks behind it a little bit cleaner I got it kind of thrown in there no one's really going to see how probably wire tie that that mess together but that's uh that's out of the way and like i say it's still got some some wiring to do but at least it's functional and i kind of like the temperature gauge or the sensor being back there um so you don't want it flush against the wall anyway because you need to have some air circulation coming out of this thing but you know it's out of the way it's not really obtrusive looking I've always kind of liked this one up here personally. So 69.2 and let's give it five minutes and we'll see, see how much it drops. And I put the workload on this little unit. I set the temperature to 65 just as like a, just as a test. So I literally just turned it on or rather plugged it in about uh, less than two minutes ago. So, okay, stay tuned. All right, so I'm about ready to put it against the wall, but that's where everything back and encased and temperature continues to drop. And we have the soda rack back installed. So next I'm gonna push it close to the wall and fill her up with some sodas. 
All right, to set the temperature, it's basically just it's set, and then whatever temperature you want to set it at. I'm gonna set it at 41, and then you just hit set again, and then bring it back. We'll see how close it can get to that. And then uh, I just filled it, so it's gonna take a little bit for the temperature to stabilize, but got all the sodas in there. Not full, because I want to let everything circulate around pretty good, but we'll check back in uh, about an hour or so, and we'll see how we're doing in here. Okay? And you can see the temperature stabilized at 66.9 there, 67, so it's about 0.1 off, but overall... And it's about how close I have it to the wall. I might actually move it out a little bit more, but, okay. All right, so we are a little bit more than a, yeah, about 35 minutes, 40 minutes. And it's dropped a couple degrees. So that's actually pretty good considering that with a regular compressor, it was it would take forever for it to go down like one degree when you first started it up so yeah pretty good I'll shoot the gun in here we'll actually see what the we got the air circulating in the back now it's kind of hard to get to the, the coils back there You can see where the cans are. Yeah, they're starting to cool down. All right. So far, so good. So we'll just keep an eye on it. We're we're actually going to let this run for uh, for 24 hours. So tomorrow night we'll see where we actually sit at. Like I said, I had it safeguarded at 41 degrees, but it keeps going down. So we'll see how low it gets. All right. All right, so here we are basically an hour from where we started it. 65.1 and 65 degrees there. So about a two degree, almost a two degree drop in an hour with this whole, uh, with all these cans being at room temperature. So overall, I think that is a good starting progress I guess you can say so we'll check this in uh, I gotta get pretty early in the morning for a project so I'll probably come out here and check it and see where we're at but like I said default is at 41 degrees so we'll see uh, we'll see what we get down to all right so this is at the eight hour mark roughly so it's pretty early in the morning, but it looks like at least the cans now are not shown at room temperature. So it's getting there. And you can definitely feel the cold coming out of here. You know, the back is still, so the whole unit is cooling down. Anyhow, that's kind of a, an update. We'll see what it is at the, the actual 24-hour mark. And like I said, there was a pretty big thermal load starting it up from the whole thing being at room, room temperature and then loading it up. But, all right. We'll see at 24 hours exactly where we're sitting at. All right, 24-hour so update. All this was actually off it. Actually, it didn't trip the breaker, but it tripped one of those uh, safety circuits. I forget what they're called right now. But anyway, so I don't know how long that's been off, but you can tell the temperature actually went up because it wasn't, wasn't working on cooling. Um, so units back up and running it again. But if you saw the other video clip before, it was definitely not 
cooling as fast as I wanted it. Um, it looks like we're going to have about a 10 degree difference in temperature. And unfortunately, from the math and everything I did, we should be seeing at least a 20 degree difference. So if it's like 71 degrees in here, we should get at least 51 in here um, inside the soda machine. So anyway, I still feel pretty good about the project. However, I gotta do a little bit more research and find out why that this is not cooling enough. Um, anyway, stay tuned. All right, so some things that I found out making this thermoelectrically cooled was uh, this timer and controller uh, was garbage. I'll actually put the link down in there so you can see which ones to avoid. That one died after uh, one day. It didn't operate at 100% efficiency, so I couldn't see what the temperature drop actually was. Uh, I was getting somewhere between 10 and 12 degree uh, drop from ambient. So it's not exactly what we're looking for. We're looking to get something probably like a lot cooler than that. Uh, however, it was a good learning experience. So a thermoelectrically controlled uh, vending machine may take skybox. Not going to happen right now. Anyway, stay tuned. I will have some other solutions. I'm looking at some probably more expensive thermal units to try out. Um, I don't know if I want to spend that money yet or not. I mean, we're talking about four or five hundred dollars. Maybe I'll put a, a link down at the bottom. Maybe you guys can donate and, you know, I'll get, I'll find out a couple different units that work that don't work. And we can go from there. Anyhow, that's the update. So a thermoelectric operated skybox vending machine, uh, not going to happen right now. But we will look for other alternatives to make this, uh, Make this thing work. Bring back to life. Okay. Brian McGrath Mahal. Thanks for watching and subscribing and liking this video. Have a great day. Be safe out there. All right. So let me get my flashlight working here. I've dismantled the thermoelectric experiment because uh, first the timer basically died after a day and the units they just didn't seem like they were strong enough to to cool everything in the back however there is hope uh, I picked this up for about a hundred bucks on Amazon and it's a thermoelectric heater and cooler the only thing is that I was expecting Maybe my units weren't that efficient, and this unit would be a lot more efficient. So it's kicking out 75 degrees, 76 degrees on that side. But on the inside, I was actually kind of amazed. I've only had this running for about 15 minutes. And it's pumping out air that is less than 40. Well, see, you can see it going down 46 degrees and dropping. But... It's been blowing air straight down, and in 15 minutes, the whole inside of this is definitely in the 50s. And it's about half the size of the inside of the vending machine, so I got a feeling that this actually is probably going to work. Anyhow, so plan is I'm probably going to cut this off the top of the cooler. And mount that to the back of the skybox. So stay tuned. I'm probably gonna have to cut a bigger hole, but we'll see what happens. Okay, so where we last left off is I had the whole thermoelectric cooling unit. And you had some light on that. I had that hooked up to the back, and it just was not not working. Just didn't have enough oomph. So what we have is we have the top of that thermoelectric cooler and yeah what a mess this is this mess is all because of this guy but anyway so what i'm gonna do 
and I believe it's gonna work this time because when I was putting a temperature gauge on this thing last night, I had it running for probably a half hour and I didn't film the, the second part of it, but it dropped down to 35 degrees coming out of, of that port. So I am going to basically mount this to the back and probably cut this hole a little bit bigger. I don't want to because of the insulation, but I can't figure out a good thing to really adapt to that. And then we have the whole problem of it sticking out too far. So I'll probably mount it in here, cut the hole bigger, and then take a test and see what it looks like. Anyway, stay tuned. All right, so I use an angle grinder to kind of grind through the plastic to make this a little bit more flush so uh, I can mount it better against the back of the cabinet. I'm just going to put some uh, Gorilla tape over this temporarily. Uh, I'll probably fill it with foam later on at some point and uh, go from there. All right, so before I get too far dressing this whole thing up, what I did is I, I took a piece of wood trim and I put it down at the bottom, screwed some metal screws in just to hold this into place. And then I'm loosely putting some uh, Gorilla Tape around the edges to hold it, as well as to uh, just kind of like make a little bit of a seal. Again, if this actually cools down, I'll foam everything in and definitely make it more permanent permanent so actually you can remove it because i would imagine these units won't last forever but you get a year or two out of it i think that'll probably be great so i'm going to put the rest of it back together and we'll test it out all right so i basically i put a power strip in there because i didn't feel like hacking this wire apart or basically another experiment um so i'm gonna plug the power strip in Put the front guts back in, and then we'll uh, we'll see how the temperature starts dropping down. Right now, it's 70 degrees in there, or actually in this whole room. So we'll keep an eye on it. All right, so we got the unit back together. Got it stocked. Oh, I need some water, but anyway, it is 71.6 degrees in there right now. And on the back, let's see what this, all right, so this is pumping out about 87 degrees, 88, and climbing. So, yeah, it's almost hitting like 90, 91. So this is definitely putting out a lot more hot air than the other unit was. And, uh, oh, sorry, it dropped 71.5. So, I feel pretty good that this is going to work. And we'll put the... So, it's too early to tell, but still... Everything's pretty hot in here still. Oh, that temperature's starting to drop down a little bit. It's actually dropping down pretty quick. So, we'll let this run for a little while. We'll see what, uh, we're, what we're at. And it's like 11.35, so we'll give it like an hour, and we'll see what the temperature drops down to. But that's 71.5 right now. Okay? All right, so here we are at about the half hour mark. Yeah, I was getting a little anxious. But 69.2, so we're definitely moving in the right direction here. So, let's keep an eye on it. All right, so about an hour and a half later, and considering I anticipated being 24 hours, if my math is correct on this as well. But, oh yeah, you can already kind of feel the cool air coming out. Let's see if we go a little bit lower. So, you can kind of get the spikes out of the cans. The cans are actually getting down the temperature. So overall, and again, I have that, this temperature gauge hooked up in the back right hand corner of the soda machine. So it is going to take a little bit longer and you can see how that actually spiked a little bit with the door open, but I got a good feeling this is going to work. All right. All right. So we're five hours 
and it's at 64 degrees. And that hook just fell. We'll fix that. And on the inside, I don't want too much air out. So we got 63, 62 as we go lower. So it's definitely getting cold. And then uh, back there, I'm trying to get to where it's actually coming out of the back, but so 61. So definitely on the cool side. And of course that went up because so we got the cabinet open, but we were definitely getting there. And you can feel the cold coming off, off the unit. So definitely heading in the right direction. We'll uh, update you in know, a couple more hours. All right, so we are at 60.4 degrees. And that is exactly 12 hours since we started it. Uh, let's take a peek inside and see what the temperature actually actually is i mean it is 60.4 but let's see how these cans and stuff are doing so so back in the back it's like 57 in the front you still have some some heat going on not that bad though it looks like everything's cooling down pretty good and again 59 58 58 degrees a little bit deeper and then the thermostat temperature gauge is up here so you can see how that's climbing so then down here at the bottom point so back is definitely getting on the cooler side and you can see how I opened it the temperature started going up but the indoor temperature here is not that top number that's outside 62 I mean 72 72 degrees so after 12 hours we actually achieved a little bit better results than that unit and so far so good um, I'm gonna go to sleep now and I'll update you hopefully around the same time tomorrow so we got a good 24 hour look at how we're doing but other than that i am really satisfied so far with the whole unit on the back here and it doesn't look that bad especially when you get it against the wall but thinking about maybe flex sealing the outside of it like you know black so it kind of blends in with everything and then on the inside i'll definitely foam the back so the insulation is a lot better but there you go okay here we are it's not quite 24 hours later but it's like 23 hours but anyway give you a good idea so we are at 56.6 degrees on the inside which is uh believe it or not that's what i was trying to achieve and inside ambient it's 69 in here so um we're not quite at a 20 degree difference but to me i think that is definitely a huge success and you you can definitely feel the cold coming out of the thing so inside it's actually around 54 degrees in the back is what you have so up here where the temperature gauge is, it's going to be a little bit warmer. The whole hot air rises. But in the back, we've definitely achieved. You can see how it's dropping even more. More aim it towards the whole back section. So, and even the cans are definitely chilled. And again, this was going from everything at room temperature including the cans bringing it down to that that 56 degrees 50 55 on the inside and it'll continue to go down once it keeps working so yeah that's basically all i did now i'm just basically going to dress that up a lot better but i think that is a lot more successful than that attempt which was not a waste of money i look at that as kind of an education more than anything else but um 
yeah, basically brought this Skybox Maytag vending machine back to life. And uh, now I can finally clean all that up. And believe it or not, all that is bringing this thing back to life. Anyhow, I think that was a great success. And I'm really excited to see how much lower this actually will go. But, um, yeah. Anyway, I'll leave the links to basically everything except that on how to do this. And you follow my video, you should be able to do a pretty good conversion. If you want to contact me to do a conversion, I can definitely probably do that. Just, uh, you know, send me a message and we'll, we'll figure out how we can get it done for you. Uh, Cost-wise, I haven't even begun to think of how much the conversion will actually cost because, like I said, there was hours put into that and then cutting and pulling it apart. But I think uh, a second attempt at one, I'll be able to definitely streamline the entire process. And obviously, I'll make it look a lot prettier than that. But that was just uh, the quick and dirty to get it converted over and running. And like I said, instead of the power stripping them back, I'll definitely open that up and make it just the one cord again and make it a lot prettier looking, even though you're really not going to see the back of the machine. Anyhow, Brian from Garage Mahal, have a great day, and uh, thank goodness we were able to bring this back to life because I love these little machines. Okay, have a great day. Thanks for watching and subscribing.